So after weeks of waiting, I finally got approved into the Adobe Firefly beta program. This is an AI tool created by Adobe and it is without a doubt the best AI design tool out there. And so in this video, I'm gonna dive in, show you how it works, what it can do, and hopefully get you excited for the future of AI as a designer. So let's get into it. This is Adobe Firefly beta, and I have been messing around with this thing all morning, and I'm blown away by what it's able to do. And I've been messing around with a lot of different AI tools in the past weeks. I've been making videos on these, but this is by far the best tool that I've used. And I can't wait to see what they do with this in the near future because right now all you can do inside of this beta is text to image and text effects, which are two features that are really, really fun. And so I want to show you both of these inside this video. So let's go to text to image. And once you get inside this, you're just going to see a bunch of different images that have been generated by users on this big wall. And this is a great place to get inspiration. And you can see here that like other AI tools, really the only restrictions that you have are your creativity in your prompts. And so to start this out, let me go ahead and move my face up here. And I thought up a couple fun prompts that would show you the capabilities of this tool. So first we're just gonna type in cute pink robot. So this is a short prompt, but I wanna show you what this is going to come back with. And then we're gonna show you how you can adjust the different tags and styles to come up with completely different images. So here's what it's come back with. And like many AI tools, you're going to be able to go deeper and deeper based on the image that you like. So what I mean by that is if I hover over this, this is the image that I like. I can click show similar, and then this is going to bump out the other three images and then just give me more additional images similar to this one. So it's gonna match the style. Typically it's going to match the overall layout. And just like that, we've got three additional options to look at, okay? So there are a ton of different things and, and truly there are infinite amounts of different styles that you can accomplish with this. So looking over here on the right side, we've got our content type. So we've got art, graphic, and photo. So just to show you really quickly, what this is going to do when I switch from art to photo, for example, is it's going to give us a more realistic look. So you can see here that we've added kind of this 3D look. We've got lighting, we've got shadows, we've got more realistic backgrounds. And so it's a completely different style. And so this is gonna be your starting point, deciding whether you want a photo, graphic, or art style. And so for this example, let's go ahead and start with a graphic style. These are some fun options. And again, let's just say that I like this top option. So we're gonna go ahead and show similar to this, and then we're gonna start adjusting the styles of these. So while those are generating down here, we've got our styles. We've got popular movements, themes, techniques, a bunch of different things that we can do. So starting out, let's just go ahead and make this neon. And for movements, let's add cyberpunk because I feel like that's a well-known style. And that's drastically going to change the looks of our robots and match these different styles and themes. And so this is getting really fun because you can match really any design style that you want, whether you're taking these images and using them on social media, putting them on a website, marketing materials, whatever it might be. And we're gonna talk about the legalities behind using these images later on. But for now, just understanding that you can create virtually anything. All right, so I was trying to brainstorm a couple other examples that would show us some fun images. So the new idea that I had was orange turtle with boxing gloves. And right now we've got it set to art and there are no additional tags. And so this is going to generate a higher level set of images. And then we can go based off of those. So I'm not really liking the look of these. So I'm gonna switch over to photo, see if we can come up with some more realistic images. All right, and so these are looking a little bit creepy to me. So let's go ahead and add some different styles. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add, hmm, let's go to movements and let's go ahead and try fantasy. And let's go ahead and generate and see what this comes up with. All right, so fantasy is giving us a little bit different of a look. And right here, I'm really liking this top image. So I'm gonna show similar here. And we've got a few new variations that it's come up with. Now, I think I like this one in the top right for right now. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to come down here to lighting and I'm gonna see what the lighting will do. So if we press dramatic lighting, let's go ahead and generate that. And I wanna see how the lighting will change the look of the images. So you can tell a bigger difference on these other images, but I do like kind of like the smoky background. Um, it just gives it more of like a dingy look, right? And then let's go color and tone. 
and I feel like we probably want more of like a cool tone, right? Because this is just like a, a serious turtle. Boom. All right. So looking at this, let's say this is my final image that I want to download. So I can come up here to download. And what this is going to do is it is going to tell us about the content credentials that are included when downloading an AI image. Now, I don't know all the legalities behind this, and I don't claim to be an attorney that understands all of this. But what I do understand from this is that Adobe is trying to be safe with the way that they generate and share AI images and content because they want people to know whether or not it was created by a human or AI. And there are different ways to track this. So if we come to the learn more about the content credentials, this is going to show you that you should be adding these credentials whenever you use an image on a website, on social media. But most of the time, that's probably not going to happen. And tools like Adobe understand this. So what they have is a couple dedicated tools that should be able to determine whether or not an image was generated by AI. Now, I don't know how well this works. I don't know what this is going to look like in the future of AI because it just seems very difficult to track. And even if we can track what was generated by AI, at some point, there's going to be so much content, so much images out there that I don't really know if it matters. But for right now, I think it's good to play within these rules, play it safe, give the proper attribution to the AI tool that you use. But I would definitely recommend getting in and reading more of this just to make sure that you're understanding the legalities behind this because Adobe wants to make sure that people can trust these images that they know where they came from and i do think it is good to have some sort of regulations around this right so coming back to the tool um the last thing that i just wanted to do because i had this idea as i was prepping for this is let's just say that i have a funny holiday idea let's just say santa claus lifting weights and i'm going to go ahead and remove all of these tags and i'm going to go ahead and generate this and just see what it comes up with because right now remember we have content type set to none. And so this could really come up with anything. And the first thing it comes up with is pretty creepy. I'm not really liking the realistic look. So let's go ahead and switch to graphic style and see if we can come up with a fun image of Santa. All right, so not really sure what's going on with some of these, but let's just say that I like this one down in the bottom left. So we're gonna click show similar, get a couple different variations, and then we will adjust our styles. Now. The one on the bottom left, I probably like the most. I'm a little bit concerned about the balance of Santa's plates here, but we're gonna ignore that for now. And let's just go ahead and go with psychedelic and maybe Baroque. Let's just see what that comes up with. Boom, all right, cool. I'm liking all of these. Let's just say I like this one down at the bottom. Um, I can go ahead and export this. It also gives you the option to just copy to your clipboard and you can submit this to the Firefly Gallery. So again, just showing you a, a number of different ways that you can utilize this text to image tool. Now what I wanna do is I wanna come back to our text effects tool. And this is another one that I played around with a lot. You can see exactly what this is trying to do, right? You're taking different letters and words and you're giving them a texture or a style to add a little bit of depth. And so like different things like pink gold balloon, um, this one is supposed to be chocolate chip cookies, which honestly that looks more like spaghetti to me. This one is holographic dripping color, I really like. This one, holographic snake skin. So if we type this in, let's just say that the text that I want is, let's just do AI, right? And then let's say that the effect I want is to match my pink robot. So I'm gonna type in pink robot parts and let's generate that. And this tool works very similarly to the text to image where it gives you all of your different options here on the right. And then you can see how this is wrapping or creating these letters based off of your prompt. And then you have all of your different variations down here and you can adjust the text effect fit here so you can see that this is set to medium if i set this to loose whatever is creating these letters is going to go a little bit more haywire you can see that they're like leading off of the letters every time i've used this it seems to just make it look chaotic and so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that but you can also change your fonts down here so let's just say i want to use postino and so this is really really cool and you can also set a background color so for another example let's just say that i want to do my initials I want to use maybe Poplar for my font. And then I want to go ahead and do a yellow zebra 
balloon. All right, cool. So you can see that it's got that kind of 3D effect. It's taken my yellow zebra idea, turned it into a balloon, and created my letters. Now, a lot of these that I've generated, I feel like they have imperfections, and I'm not quite sure how that is supposed to get fixed because a lot of the examples that it showed seemed really perfect. I don't know if there are ways to upscale this, and so I'm going to have to mess around with this a little bit more. Uh, but overall, man, a, a really cool tool. I'm really liking the direction in which this is headed. Being able to take two separate things like letters and textures and images and like meshing those together using AI gives you a lot of cool capabilities for all sorts of design applications. So this is such a cool tool. And I know right now they're still in beta. I had to wait, I think, two weeks to get my invite into the beta. And I know that they have a lot of work to do here. I still think they have rules based on what you can share or how you can use your images while they are still in beta. And so again, I, I would definitely suggest that you look into that on your own and do your due diligence and just figure out how all those things work. But this is a great way for us just to get a glimpse into the future of AI and design and how it's going to affect our jobs. Um, I hope this doesn't make you nervous. I hope that instead, you can see this as an opportunity to utilize these types of tools to make you more efficient, come up with better ideas. Um, I think the future is bright for designers, especially with tools like this. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you want more videos on AI and design, and we'll catch you in the next video.